Good morning, friends and neighbors, and welcome to Soundbites with Bill Wood, a certified lay minister at St. Paul's United Methodist Church in El Paso, Texas, where our mission is to love God, follow Jesus, and serve others. Again, if you have any joys or prayer requests, please send them to the St. Paul's email address so that we may rejoice with you and pray with you. Nephew Wood, please join me in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for the many blessings that you shower upon us each day. Thank you for your mercy and your grace, which is abundantly new for us every day. We thank you, Father, that as we share with one another and study your word, that you speak to us and you help us to grow in our spiritual development and be, be better disciples of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So if you would, please open your Bibles to Hebrews, the 10th chapter, and we will read verses 19 through 25. So Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by new and living ways, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain that is his body. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from the guilty conscience and have our bodies washed with the pure water. Let us hold unswaveringly to the hope that we have, that we profess. For he who promised is faithful, and let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together, as some have the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Now, perhaps what the writer is trying to get across to us in these verses is some practical way of putting to use the theology that he has been saying. And in verse 20, when he says, by his body, I think what this means is that as a result of Jesus' death and resurrection, the veil around the Holy of Holies, the temple, that is the temple, was torn from top to bottom, and that opened the way for those accepting Christ to have access to God. Prior to this, the only, prior to this, only the high priest could enter the Holy of Holies, and that came as, as after certain ceremonial washings and certain other things were done in order for the priest to go into God's presence. And that, again, was only once a year and uh, was not lasting. He stood there and did that year after year, he had to do that every year in order to fulfill the, the sacrament that God had instituted under the old law, which we have talked about in the past. So, but Christ's death, sacrificial death, removed the barrier of the veil. And now as our high priest, he is making access to God possible for all. All we need to do is accept Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. Then in verse 19, he tells us how we are to approach God, that is with confidence. We are to come with confidence and, in verse 22, with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. And I think what he's getting at there is that the Christ sacrifice once for all was was all that was necessary in order for each of us then to come into God's presence after we accept Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. And it was no longer, he no longer had to, to offer any sacrifice. That once was sufficient. 
And we are to come with confidence and faith, knowing and believing that Christ has reconciled us to God. Barclay's commentary says that Jesus is the living way to the presence of God. Then in verse 23, the writer tells us that we are to hold unswervingly to the hope that we profess. For he who promised is faithful. Hold on to our hope. Never give up because he, Jesus, has promised to be with us and never forsake us and never leave us. And Jesus is faithful and he will do all that he has promised. So why are we to hold on to hold on and trust him to maintain that hope? Well, the writer tells us in verse 24, we are to spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Maybe another way of saying this is that we are to share with one another what God has done for us in our lives. And that we can do that by being involved in small groups and in Bible studies where that there's an opportunity to share with one another God's working in our life and how he uses us in ministry. Then to help one another also, we are to help one another grow spiritually in these small groups and sharing with one another also helps all of us to grow spiritually. Then verse 25 tells us we are not to give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another. And all the more as you see the day approaching. Now, the early church, it was all, they, they were always aware of the fact that Jesus would return soon and they expected his return very soon. And so quite often in the writings of the, of the scriptures, he told the author of the scriptures tell us that we need to be aware of that approaching day. So as we meet together and not give up meeting together, uh, we are to, to look for that and be aware of that. And I think that one of the primary reasons for worshiping is, to, is the sharing of our experiences with one another and encouraging one another. Christ gave us the charge to go into all the world and share the good news. By gathering together, we renew our faith and we get recharged, so to speak, to go about sharing the good news, to spreading the gospel. To some degree, this can be accomplished by staying at home, listening to the gospel being preached, but we cannot enjoy the fellowship with others by staying at home. When we are, we can't do that alone. We have to be with a group in order to, to experience that, that uh, fellowship and enjoy their fellowship. If we do not gather together, we miss the kindred spirit of one another. One of the commentaries thinks that this may be referring to the danger of falling away from the body of Christ, or as we would say today, the drifting away from the church and from God. As we continue to miss church, we just simply drift away and we don't have the desire to go and to worship. So we need to be aware of that. And one of the ways that we can avoid that is by continually gathering together. So this leads us to the next several verses, which we will discuss the results of falling away and not being connected. And we'll read those verses today and then discuss them when we come together the next time. So reading chapter 10, verse 26. If we deliberately keep on sinning after we have received the knowledge of truth, no sacrifice for sin is left, but only a fearful expectation of judgment and of raging fire that will consume the enemies of God. Anyone who rejects the law of Moses died without, or anyone who rejected the law of Moses died without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. And how much more severely do you think a man deserves to be punished who has trampled the Son of God underfoot and who has treated as an unholy thing the blood of the covenant that sacrificed him and who has insulted and who has then insulted the spirit of grace? For we know him who said it, it is mine to avenge and I will repay. And again, the Lord will judge his people 
it is a dreadful thing to fall into the hand of the living God. So think on this and meditate on it and see if you can come up with some uh, with the way that you understand what the writer is trying to tell us here. And then we will talk about this some um, next week and I'll share my thoughts on it. So I've enjoyed sharing with you this morning. And if you have any comments or different ideas about these verses, don't hesitate to send them to the St. Paul's email address. And if you do, then I will address them. I would love to hear from you. So have a wonderful time with the Lord and may the Lord continue to richly bless you. Go in peace and in the love of God.